Hello, the practitioner here again, a uh, Bachelor of Science student, magician, and something of a skeptic pertaining to psychic phenomena in general. Um, again, as I've said from my previous videos, I think that certain things such as telepathy and the like may be more likely than not. Um, I've provided another uh, listing here, uh, at least a, a link to, um, I provided yet another link to another Dean Radin talk. Um, as I've said before, uh, I still stand by my opinions right now until this whole issue of experimenter bias on one side or the other has been dealt with. But, nonetheless, um, regardless of uh, my own personal opinions on it, I still think this video, at least as talked by Dean Radin, is highly informative and is at least worth the watch by both skeptics and believers alike. Um, at the very least, it would provide more information for digestion and for further processing about this whole issue. Um, you know, again, I'm, you know, I do think that there, you know, I, I would say that he did appear to handle the issues very, fairly well. Um, I would be a little skeptical about his initial, uh, about some of his initial conjectures, but I'd say that, again, uh, the information provided um, does bear worth further research. So anyway, I digress on that. Um, I'm basically, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just simply going to say, go watch the video, uh, make up your own mind. I took a look at the comments, too, and... Um, I noticed there was some good stuff, there was some bad stuff on both sides of the issue. Uh, there was one person saying blah, blah, blah. I wasn't entirely too sure what that was meant to. Um, you know, there were a few uncertains. Um, but overall, I'd have to say it, at least it's worth the watch. That's all I'll say about it. Um, I'd say that Dean Radin apparently is competent, at least as an experimenter, or at least, at, least is at least is competent about explaining the experimental work so far. Uh, my, again, like his other video was was real was high, uh, was uh, really good in that particular aspect as well. Um, so yeah, um, go watch the video um, and go read my other sources. I posted in other videos on parasite phenomena. Um, take a look at the sources. Take a look at everything for yourself. Make up your own mind. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, critical thinking is always a must on any of these issues. Um, so yeah, like I said, keep it up. Um, one thing I will say about the uh, about the issues pertaining to skeptic.com, if you read the comments there, um, I'm not too sure about the essays one. I've actually read some of the. Uh, I thought that some of the work when I read Robert T. Uh, Todd Carroll about his work on Dean Radin, some of it may have been justified, some not. Uh, there was a particular aspect in reference to Dean Radin. Uh, I'm not sure if it was in that article or another one uh, written by Carroll on the same site. But he said um, he said that 0.05. Uh, he was skeptical about whether that standard should even be used uh, for tests that contain trillions of trials. So he and he said um, so after the pair studies, they put it through some statistical significance formula and got 625 trillion to one. Why am I not impressed? Um, that comment uh, I think is a little off. Uh, again, bear in mind that uh, Robert, Dr. Robert Carroll, is a philosophy professor. And his understanding of statistics and uh, the relevant mathematics, uh, or at least at least it comes across in that particular aspect that the actual nature of statistics in general is not really considered in these particular issues. Now, on the other hand, other skeptics such as Ray Hyman may be right, and I actually agree with him on one particular aspect, that, um, well, regardless of whether the meta-analysis, uh, his interpretation of the meta-analysis was correct or not, or whether the other people's was correct, I do agree with the one with one statement that uh, doc, that um, Dr. Ray Hyman said about the issues pertaining to Gansfield. Meta-analysis should be used to um, take a look at the existing data and then generate new hypotheses which should be retested uh, independently by other experts at other institutions. Um, I do will, I will agree with one uh, thing by Dean Radin on this particular point. The stats do seem to be clear that there are minimal people who are actually involved in this particular type of work. Now, um, I do have some studies I've quoted about other about similar uh, about Thelma Moss's work and uh, work done similar uh, you know similar Al Gansfield or other stuff like that at McGill University. Uh, um, Dean Radin re references McGill University. I have a copy of one of the papers published as a master's thesis working with D.C. Don Derry and uh, Howard Eisenberg during his master's thesis time period um, that, uh, that I, one of the studies which actually wasn't debunked, but again, isolated study, yada, yada, yada. Um, I've gone into a great deal on this on other of my videos before. Um, again, 
Uh, further, again, there has been some replication elsewhere, but if we're to meta-analyze all the studies, that means that we still need a new replication testing format. And I think that Dean Radin is right in one aspect, that there doesn't seem to be the bulk of scientists who are interested in testing for this phenomenon. So I strongly urge, uh, again, I'm still trying to test for clairvoyance, telepathy, and stuff like that with what limited resources I have. And I do have a Titan protocol on my own te uh, telepathy experiment in relation to experimenter psi effect or experimenter bias over instant messenger system, which I, uh, I have ready. I'm just waiting for somebody to come along to fund it, um, preferably a skeptical organization, because I would like to try to see some skeptics attempt to uh, deal with this, uh, fellow skeptics attempt to deal with this issue. Um, again, as I've said before, uh, Ray, uh, Michael Shermer approved the protocol, but he's uh, got his hands full right now. And, um, well, the BC skeptics said it was reasonable, but they didn't have the resources to handle it. Um, and, well, James Randi blew the whole thing off, as I already told you before about the, when, I, when I showed that into the look in the Psychic Update series. So, uh, again, as I said before about all this, um, further replication and testing is needed. Testing on the experimenter bias effect or the experimenter psi effect, checking for actually of these, is probably a better idea. This would at least counter the, uh, again, uh, this particular talk talks about a couple a, of uh, uh, skeptics who actually did manage to replicate. Um, I would say, and as well, another one of my sources I listed uh, does talk about skeptics who were able to do this with subjects who were unaware that they were in an ESP test and did replication. Uh, the reason I present experimenter bias as a possibility is that it might account for the uh, remaining skeptics, uh, skeptics' failures to replicate, uh, and more specifically that um, we should at least deal with that probability as a possibility for why uh, believers and some skeptics are getting uh, this effect, but others are not. Uh, it, again, it, um, again, it might be, again, just purely to uh, take a look at that as one last possible variable before seeing if the, e even in the unlikelihood that of this stuff happening by chance, that it actually is happening by chance. You know, uh, that it is just a, a very long repeated chance correlation that is very highly unlikely, but still happening. Again, uh, these are issues which need to be considered uh, even, and Dean Radin is right. There are examples, um, again, this is one thing I will agree with him on about. There are examples of uh, other places in science where um, uh, theory, uh, where, uh, where theory actually uh, was uh, preceded by experimental data. Um, prominent examples, uh, or more specifically, that, uh, that theories or proto-theories would have been put forward and uh, might have been disregarded. Um, examples of this include continental drift, which was a theory, uh, which was actually a, um, it was actually an idea where um, uh, somebody uh, said that um, they were trying to answer a question in archaeology, uh, in paleontology, about why very f various different fossils on the sides of Africa and South America, uh, east side of Africa and south side, west side of South America, were looking similar. Well, somebody suggested, well, if you take a look at the map, the world map, and you look at the, uh, and you look at the, two, or was it the east of, of South America? Uh, anyway, if you take a look at the world map, you find that two of the coasts of South America and uh, Africa uh, can overla overlap fairly closely, and maybe at one point they were actually a single continent. Maybe they drifted apart. Well, that idea for the better part of 40 years was considered preposterous until somebody came up with a better theory of um, uh, uh, G, uh, of uh, plate tectonics, and from that, that was when extrapolated. Um, uh, X-rays was another one. Um, the Lord Kelvin actually said that X-rays were a hoax until other people uh, started getting some replication of it that was still controversial. Then somebody developed a theory on it and it went away. Um, another one was the uh, whole theory of evolution. Um, uh, you know, Natural Selection posted a theory. Uh, Mendelian genetics got brought in. Um, well, of course, that one was just a uh, that one was against a, a one against the religious establishment. That wasn't exactly against the uh, scientific establishment of the day. But um, again, you know, uh, well, actually, what passed for for science at that time, you know, it took a better part of a century of experimental proof. A uh, century and a half of experimental proof before evolution was, uh, before the burden of proof finally shifted over to the creationists uh, for making a positive assertion. So, um, you know, uh, again, this is an issue worth looking into, is what I would say. Um, I saw some very good comments on there about people wanting to replicate the skin conductance level experiments. Uh, again, I applaud skeptics who, uh, who don't believe the data but want to test it for themselves. I applaud you. Keep, uh, keep at it. Um, for the rest of you, watch the video. Um, try to see about replication yourself or, you know, further research. I still say that this is a subject uh, which, should, which should be further researched. Um, I'm still a little skeptical. I think it may be more likely than not given the current evidence. However, um, based on that, I still think that we still, there's a lot more questions that need to be answered before we can say definitively one way or the other. I've already, again, I still stand by my positions on this, um, but this is still a very interesting watch. The comments are a very good read. 
Um, I think I've pretty well covered that. Again, look on uh, Google. Um, I've got various sources on here as well, which I haven't uh, put in my uh, bibliography and the like. If you would like extra sources on both uh, pro and con sides, do by all means uh, message me. I will send you a bunch or put them up in another video if I get enough comments for them. Um, yada, yada, yada. I think that covers it. Toodles. Enjoy the video.